my lovelies. If you hear a background noise, I am sorry, not sorry, not switching the cooler off because it's finally working in here. So I am a happy chappy and it's the first day that it's actually working. So there's that. Now, let's get on with what's going on today. I have been invited to the hand-built invitational show in LA over the 4th of July weekend. Uh, I'm going to be taking Nessie because that's who was invited. Yes, I'm talking about Nessie like she is a person, but she is to me. And uh, there's something that I have to get done. You guys are familiar with Nessie and in the back here we have a whole array of stuff. This is the Pro Eagle tray. It normally holds my Pro Eagle jack, which is over there by the floor. Um, I'm gonna be taking this off and making a tray to hold the Renegade Vault. Yes, this is my portable welder. And because I built Nessie using my ESAB welder, I want to show off um, pretty much one of the products. And I think it's gonna be really cool just sitting in the back of here that bright yellow when the vault is in the blue of Nessie so I think it's gonna look great there's a little bit of a problem this tray is obviously made for the jack not the welder so I'm gonna remove this and I'm going to be using angle iron right here to uh, make a little tray for the welder to sit in. Okay, it's not gonna travel with it on there. It's not gonna be there during races. This is just for the hand-built show. So I'm very excited. And I'm also very excited about being part of this show. It's primarily uh, a motorcycle show, but because they're doing it in LA for the first time, they're opening it up to vehicles. And the fact that we were invited to come along is um, pretty special, to be honest with you. I feel like a lot of this year so far, I've spent in the shop and been working and building skills and learning new skills the hard way, because it's the only way I learn. And it's starting to kind of pay off a little bit. So am I a little nervous, the fact that we're going to a show with beautifully hand-built, like 300 plus hours into these one of a kind motorcycles of course i am she is rough around the edges but she's my rough around the edges and i'm very proud of her so yeah let's get this thing off and start making a tray tell you my ideas that I've gone through for this because there's been a couple I was like I really like that material I'm gonna go get a sheet of metal the exact same and make a really nice tray well I went to get a sheet of metal and I just can't fathom spending that money at the moment when I need like le less than a quarter of that sheet so angle iron I decided to go with because I had a bunch set at the shop here this is kind of what I did. I know it's for the guys out there who do this professionally, this is going to be cringeworthy, but I put the bottom of the Renegade vault on here and just drew around it so that I knew exactly the measurements that I needed. This is the way I did it. Is it the most professional way? Of course not. Is it my way? Yes. Okay, all in all, compared to the Pro Eagle tree, we're about four inches wider and I mean, much shorter. I know it's gonna work in that space, but also I did measure this up the other day. It's gonna fit in there pretty good. So what I wanna do is actually clean the angle iron up first. I wanna clean everything off because I'm gonna be welding it also, but I also want it to look nice-ish and not covered in muck. Okay, before I start doing anything, I need to grab some brake clean so I can just clean that material so it's 
uh, ready and prepped. Yeah. Okay, material is all clean. I had measured for the length for 19 and 3 eighths. Let's see when I take the bottom of the Renegade vault, um, if that is gonna sit nicely in here. I like it. Let's get the sides done. All right, so I took a second there because I was trying to figure out how I wanted to do this. So this is the length that I wanted at. It's not level right now. It's gonna be about an inch and a quarter sticking out, okay? So what I'm going to do is measure in between the two edges right here. Then I'm going to mark it on this piece that I'm going to cut. And then I want this edge piece right here to butt up against here so that I can weld in the corners there, which means this whole piece right here will be slipped right underneath, which is perfect. So say I'm going to cut right here, for example. I'm gonna cut this out, this square out, cut this square out, and then it should nicely just slip in right there. That's what I was trying to talk about. Took the pieces out from the side on the outsides so that it just slips in a loop like so and we will get those corners nicely welded together. I love it when a plan comes together. All right, let me go cut the other side so that we can get welding this together. <laughs>
It looks really, really good. I'm really happy with it. What I was thinking of doing was putting strap here and then putting bolts in here so it stays. I'm now rethinking everything because this isn't a permanent thing, like I said before. So what I think I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna weld this up nicely and I'm gonna take it in the truck with me and just place it there. Um, I don't wanna spend too much time on something that's just never gonna realistically be in there, especially during a race. At the pits, yes. We use the Renegade Vault a lot in the pit tent uh, this year at King of the Hammers. We also had people use it like, amber so uh it was really cool that people just knew that we had that there and you didn't need to plug it into a generator and we could just take it around a couple of pit tents actually is what we did as well and help some people out so uh yeah long story short it's not going to be there permanently so i'm really happy with this little tray thing so make it look pretty put it in the truck, and then it's time to clean this up a little bit. took uh, some of the tabs off because I took some of the tabs off had to grind it down and then there was one shiny spot and I couldn't deal with it don't get me wrong it is far from clean clean but she's looking pretty clean for her and a little tiny bit on the shiny side Time to just get her loaded up. I think it's like 10.30 right now. I'm gonna load her up on the repo ram. That's right, George very nicely said that I could borrow this. Let's get her loaded up. We're gonna be leaving in like 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, in five. As you can probably tell, we are here at the Hamville show. We are. Uh, we are in downtown LA right now and it is kind of bustling. I loaded everything in um, and it's time to go check out the show. I'm really, really excited. I don't know where Nessie ended up. I really feel out of place. It's hilarious. I am not trendy enough to be here. That's how I'm feeling right now. But let's head on in and check all these bikes out. Believe it or not, already I have been asked, what the hell is this? Being primarily that this is normally a motorcycle show, it happens in Austin in April. This is the first time they've done it here in LA and they invited vehicles as well. So uh, the motorcycle people are like, what is this thing? I've been telling them all about it and 
Uh, a lot of them have noticed that there is a welder on the back and I was telling them about King of the Hammers and how this saved not only our booties out on the lake bed but a couple of other racers as well. You don't need an outlet to plug this into, you don't need to put it into a generator at all. It's actually powered by default batteries so you can just simply slide those two pieces on together and have at it. Switch it on, have at it, get whatever you need welded together and put together and Heck yeah. I am going to be working on a couple of projects coming up in the near future using the vault as well as the Rebel 205 ACDC machine that I have in the shop that you guys have seen me use a lot. So uh, yeah, this has been pretty wicked cool. starting to load on out. It's time for us to leave LA and head on back to Utah and maybe get to Liberty Biberty. Now you're in the garage and we have a lot to get done because Mischief Maker is on here. Let me tell you what's going on. See, see something a little funky? There's obviously been a lot of articulation going on. You guys know I don't wheel him in the nicest of ways. I really push everything all the time. Uh, yeah, I need to get that done because in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be wheeling him. So yeah, really need to get this done before anything else. So here is my game plan. I'm going to sleeve this side like I did the other side, except I'm going to drill holes in that cross member where the tubing is going to go into and I am going to plug weld that in also. But I am also going to make gussets for here. Over the years wheeling the way that I have, of course, it doesn't matter what suspension you have on there. The frame is going to twist and things are going to crack and, you know, it kind of is what it is. So that's where we're at. Uh, before anything though, I am going to spray this Jeep down. I'm going to spray it down with this good old stuff. Grip Clean actually uh, sent me some of this. So I'm going to put that in uh, a little spray bottle, spray it all, get that Jeep down, wheel it on outside, spray it down, and then come back in here. Okay, well the sleeves are up and the farmer tan is out and you know what that means. Things have escalated. So underneath the Jeep looks absolutely fantastic now. Way better. Um, but check this out. This is all still here from Moab. I mean, look at this. All right, we're looking way better. I've literally been chiseling everything away. But what I decided to do is put most of the dirt from the back in a bucket. After I have sprayed this all down, I'm actually gonna head on over to Off-Road and Chill and use their scales. And I'm gonna weigh this bucket Oh dirt, let me know how much you think this bucket of dirt, Moab dirt, weighs. Leave your comment below. Okay, a couple of things need to happen. The Jeep is way cleaner than it was before. I'm gonna leave it to dry in here. I need to have a quick shower. I need to change my t-shirt. All right, we're back in the shop. Let's get Mischief Maker up on the lift. Let's head on over to our metal corner to see what we have to sleeve Mischief Maker up. Mm. 
I think this will do. Yes, this will work perfectly. All right, the next step is to clean everything. Even although we cleaned the vehicle outside, um, it's still a little mucky in there. So I'm gonna clean that, then take the grinder and clean all the paint off. Remember when you're welding, you wanna make sure that the material is raw and clean. It's gonna make for a great connection and hopefully no spatter. So it just makes your life way easier. But even before we weld this in, remember I said I was gonna drill some holes in that cross member where that tubing is sleeved in there so that we can plug weld that in there as well to make it even stronger. I really have no idea why I did the two sides. blasting my music in here we have this cleaned up on the outer side of the frame and we've been in here not only with the grinder but with the wire brush as well so we'll get plug welds in here we'll weld like three quarters around here and then i'll just weld on the outside of here my shop is in an absolute shambles i'm gonna have to clean up again but let's see i want the hole big enough to actually make you know an impact to get a weld on in there my three eighths bit big enough Okay, we're getting there with drilling the holes. I'm gonna make them just a little bigger. But when we put our tubing through, let's see it going through. It's perfect. I mean, I thought that on the other side. I was like, this will never go anywhere. So never say never, people. Thank <laughs> you. 
there you have it. Done and done. I put some gussets in with the cross member. Um, they were actually quite difficult to do. Just the space in there, not only the space, but just getting in there with uh, the welder and stuff like that. So not my finest work. If any of you really go looking close up to that, but um, it is super strong. We've sleeved on the passenger side. There's the gusset right there. Boom. Outside looks like it's always been like that. And then I tried to clean up this side um, a little and then just painted that gusset also. So all in all, voila, we are back together again. We've had a little bit of everything. Had making that tray for Nessie. We've had fixing Mischief Maker again, but uh, yeah. Now we are ready for Liberty Bibbidi Sheila. That's right, she is gonna be next. She's gonna be pulled in. And uh, the next time I'm gonna be talking you through um, what we're doing with her, um, why I'm going that way, and my very extremely more than fair budget. Um, I'm not trying to hide anything with this budget at all. And I'm gonna just tell you the road that I'm going down with this build and hope that you kind of appreciate it and agree with me. But for now, I'm gonna get this big boy down. We're gonna drive home. We're gonna have some pizza tonight. And always, thanks for watching. whole cool close the garage door thing but I'm hungry.